to Epic Space Program. My name is Matt. Um, welcome. To, this is episode six of Epic Space Program, and we are launching a probe to the moon. Now, we've done this already, but this particular probe has something new. We unlocked the Kerbal Dust Experiment in the last one. This is a great mod. It's only one part, but it adds a really cool experiment that's based on uh, some of the NASA experiments around that they've done on the moon or in orbit around the moon, picking up particulate matter of, uh, of, of meteorite impacts. And so th that's the same idea here. It works just like any other experiments. You right click, you run the analysis, and you transmit back. The, uh, the cool thing um, is that this particular experiment gives you about 60% return on your transmission for each biome or each section that you do the science. So it's an easy way to get pick up some some quick science and I don't think that it is uh, I don't think it's overpowered or anything just because it's the way that real life science works. Uh, NASA when they send up a probe they don't usually bring it back. Um, in fact it was a really big deal when they sent that one probe to a comet to, to contain uh, to pick up some um, comet tail and then actually brought it all the way back to Earth. Usually they just send the instruments on board to be able to analyze it and send back all of the information. So that's kind of the same inspiration for this one. And uh, as we launch here, uh, I hope you can hear me a little bit better. I do want to apologize for the sound in the last couple of videos. I didn't realize that for some reason um, my recording software was not um, is, is not recording the, uh, is not, is not dampening the game sound. Uh, I have it set to do that. I haven't figured out why it's not doing that. So this time uh, I'm doing a post commentary. And so hopefully uh, when I put all the sound together, it's going to sound clearer uh, and you'll be able to hear my voice over the, the rocket and the re-entry and all of that sort of thing. So we're uh, launching here and uh, it's basic. It's a it's a very simple launch, but you may have noticed that the rocket looks a lot more rocket-like. It's because we did unlock the uh, radial decouplers in the last episode, as well as well as a couple of uh, additional tanks and structural parts and things like that. So, starting to get very very close to a legitimate-looking rocket. About the only thing I think we need left are going to be fairings and. We, we will eventually, as we start launching larger and larger objects, we are going to need those fairings, but uh, with the lightweight stuff, it's usually, I've been able to keep the speed down in the lower atmosphere to where it hasn't really been a problem, although I'm sure we are losing a fair bit of delta V to uh, atmospheric drag. So I'm going to go ahead and, and speed this up. Like I said, we're going to the moon, so I'm going to speed this up. We'll catch you back in orbit around the moon. <laughs> All right, so we're approaching the moon now, and I run the dust analysis. It's got a cool little animation where the can pops open. The dust is not like talcum powder, it's kind of evil, it follows electric field lines, it works its way in equipment. So it actually does update based on the biome and the area that you're in. Oh, I also put the Spyatron, now this is part of the LTEC science equipment, but it can scan radio signals. Uh, that's really cool because it can also transmit 100% of the science, so even though this is a relatively simple probe, we will get a lot of science. And I had put the AIES thermometer, but I didn't realize that it doesn't actually have the science component like the normal thermometer, so that was kind of useless. But anyway, uh, we go in and, and approach the moon, and then I am going to actually try and bring back the, uh, the dust experiment. Even though we get 60% for transmitting, I decided that I would go ahead, now that we've got the parachutes, I wanted to bring in all of the science. So we're going to do a quick adjustment burn and come back in, uh, come back into Kerbin's atmosphere. And I come all the way out here and I forget that my antenna only reaches to about 15 million meters. We're out at like 60 million. So that was a bust. I realized too late that we had no connection. 
Um, but what I did realize uh, was something new. I haven't actually played around with uh, remote tech that much. I mean, I've been aware of it. I've, I've, I've kind of experimented with it. But um, what I had forgotten about was the flight computer. And so what I decided to do here in order to save Delta V is I come back down uh, in range and I go ahead and set up a maneuver at the apoapsis. And I bring it down, and of course we're way out of range in order to be able to execute that maneuver, but what the flight computer can do is it can program my probe to execute that node at the time it needs to, um, and do it with a delay. And so it may not be completely precise, but uh, it's typically good enough for, you know, you're, you're going to get within about 0.1 meter per second if you do it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that. It says execute next maneuver node. It'll program that in. And then I'll time accelerate. And there you go. There you see execute plan maneuver signal delay. And of course, it's got the entire uh, five days, nine hours. And so I go ahead and time warp up. And for some reason, uh, I got stuck targeting the moon, so that's why the camera's going crazy like that. But you see our probe coming all the way up. It's out of range now, so we have no connection. But as long as your probe has power, it'll even, uh, it'll even pull you out of time warp automatically. There it goes. And the flight computer... will orient, make sure you're, you're pointed toward the node, and you'll see it burning. And you'll notice we still have no connection. So there we go. And you see our periapsis is down within the atmosphere, so that's just perfect. I'll go ahead and get rid of that node and time accelerate back and drop back into the atmosphere. Here we go. Go ahead and flip back over now. I do apologize, we're on the night side again, so I'll go ahead and turn on night vision mode. And that's just an effect in the editor, although it'd be really cool if any of you guys out there are programmers, if you could figure out a way to actually build a night vision mode into the game, it would help a lot, for, especially for us streamers. All right, so as we come down into the atmosphere, and still focus on the moon, because I can't figure out how to get it back in there, uh, we're going to use what remaining fuel we have to just bleed off as much speed as we possibly can. Um, we've got, we don't have any heat shields yet, so we really want to be careful um, coming back into the atmosphere. Because this doesn't even have, this is not a capsule. The probe does not have any ablative shielding built in. So we just have to have, we want to make sure that we're coming in absolutely as slow as we can. And preferably without blowing up any parts of our craft. Because if you notice the construction on this, most of our instruments are on that first fuel tank there. So if that fuel tank blows, we don't get any of the science that's still contained in those instruments and those experiments. So we're, we're coming in at over 3,200 meters per second. That's way too fast. That would definitely, uh, definitely burn us up. So we're going to kill as much as we can. we still got a, basically a fuel, full tank of fuel here. So as long as we can shed the speed before we drop too deep into the atmosphere, we shouldn't have a problem. Right about now, at 2400, 2500 meters per second, we would probably be okay to turn the um, to turn the the engines off. We'd probably lose those solar panels there at the bottom, but uh, I think that the fuel tank would probably survive at this point. But we've got the fuel; we're not going to be using it again, so we might as well spend all of the delta V and see how much we can we can save on this ship. We ought to be able to bring us down if we can get it down below maybe. Um, you know, about below 1,200 meters per second before we hit 30,000 
meters up, then we should be able to bring this home. Awesome, so there's another 105 science for us. See what we can unlock here. So yeah, I'm gonna unlock the basic stability control and advanced rocketry. At this point, we've basically visited everywhere we can within uh, Kerbin's SOI. Uh, we don't have the range yet to go any further. And so basically the next little bit is just gonna be a lot of grinding going to uh, each of the different biomes, repeating a lot of the same experiments you've already seen. So I'm going to do all of that off camera. Um, I'll see what I can unlock. And then in the next episode, I'll give you a tour of all of our, all of the new science tech that I'm able to get. And then I will announce what our next mission will be. So until then, I will see you next time.